The leak in the oil pan is fixed, and I did it without removing the oil pan. I know some of you recommended replacing the oil pan, but on these particular engines, you cannot remove this oil pan with the engine in place. You have to literally remove it from the car. If you don't remove it from the car, you at least have to lift it up high enough that you can work underneath it. And at that point, you might as well take the whole engine out. So. This was a leak that is not a high pressure leak, so I was not concerned about the problem of getting, you know, pressure to the area that had this little hole in there. So as many of you suggested, I went ahead and repaired this with JB Weld. Now, some of you also cautioned if you're going to use JB Weld or an equivalent, you have to be very concerned about two things. And now I'm going to explain exactly how I did this repair myself. If you read the comments in the first video, a number of viewers uh, suggested the importance of cleaning the surface and roughing the surface up, and I couldn't agree more. I used uh, two chemicals. I used a carb cleaner, which I started out with, and then I finished up with lacquer thinner, and I used a curved tip syringe as a final clean, particularly on the inside of that groove on the inside of the hole and underneath. On the whole, I just soaked and soaked, used compressed air, probably cleaned it about 10 times, about five times uh, with, uh, you know, the carb cleaner and then came back in with a uh, lacquer thinner. And of course, I used a brass brush just to get the whole area around that hole as clean as possible. Remember, you have oil that's probably absorbed into those pores in the aluminum castings. So you've got to get all that cleaned out. But in the end, I needed to fabricate some type of a heavy-duty rough brush. And you can see what I did here. I kind of bent this and I sharpened it so I could get down underneath that timing chain and get into that groove. Look at how I had to work that down in there. Notice I'm using masking tape here, and that's to prevent any problem with scratching the lip that the crank seal sits on. So you got to be real careful. Don't scratch that or damage that, or you could have a leak through that area. But I roughed up both the top side and the bottom side of the hole, as you can see here with this brush. This is a very heavy, kind of tight wound steel brush. So it's rough. And if you look here, you can see how I scratched up. You literally want to really scratch up that surface. And then I got in there after that with a Scotch-Brite pad and roughed up the surrounding area. So when we were ready to apply the epoxy, this area was about as clean as I could get it. And then, of course, I used a hot air gun on it, and I heated the entire area uh, right around that hole before I finally got ready to mix the JB Weld. Now, applying the JB Weld was a little bit of a challenge. You can see that using a screwdriver or any type of a little pick tool really wouldn't get down into that groove area underneath the timing chain. So what I decided is I resorted to using a curved tip syringe, mixed up the uh, long dry. Don't use the five minute uh, JB Weld. You have to use the very slow drying JB Weld for this repair to work properly. But then I forced it in to the curved tip syringe the hole I enlarged slightly in the end so I could get that epoxy out of the tip. And then I was able to work that tip in underneath the timing chain and completely fill the top side of the hole. And then using the curved tip syringe to go underneath, I did the same thing. And I probably had to stay with this over an hour long as I continued to make sure the JB Weld was not running. Uh, one thing I did fail to mention earlier, I put a little teeny piece of aluminum in the center part of the hole to kind of slow down any tendency for that JB Weld to want to run out of the hole. And once it started to set up, I kept smoothing it out. <clears throat> and then finally, <laughs> after working with this for about probably an hour, it started to tack up enough where I could just leave it. And it dried smooth. And uh, I believe we, what we have now is a very permanent repair. Now it's time to install a new front crank seal. I should show you what my kit consists of. It comes with complete step-by-step -step instructions because this is not an easy job. I do not consider this a beginner DIY job by no means. So first off, we only sell genuine OE 
seals. I do not recommend that you use any type of aftermarket front crank seal. This is a big job and you don't want this crank seal uh, leaking in the future, okay? I also include a red thread locker. You're gonna have to tighten this bolt down to a very high torque value and I recommend using red thread locker as a safety backup. And of course we do include in the kit a new sealing ring which I believe should be replaced if you want the new seal to last a long time. So this is the old sealing ring here and you can see the wear marks in it right there. So if you install a new seal you may have a problem with premature wear on that new seal lip. So the new sealing ring comes in the kit with instructions on how to get that on the front of the crank. Here you can see the difference between the new and the old sealing ring. And then I also include this special press tool and washer right here, which is going to help you press this seal on straight and even so it doesn't get cocked and damaged during installation. We have kits for both the turbo and the non-turbo models. So I'll put a link in the show more part of the description, which will take you right to these on my website and explain more about the kits. So I highly recommend anytime you have any part of the front section of your diesel engine off, whether it be to replace some pulleys or to work in this area, I recommend you change this seal right here. <laughs> and hopefully you'll never have a problem like I had on this engine where you actually had the chain wearing through the oil pan right there. Now I'm going to show you in a separate video the difference between the tensioner I removed from this engine and a new tensioner that I'm going to install now.